start recording. Sharing, sharing. Okay, there's that. There's that. So one of the things I usually do with this class here in this chapter um, is a project where we count stuff and look to see do the distributions work. Well, um, since it's online, I really hard to have you guys uh, count something and uh, give me the information. So I'm going to, I think I have a saved version of it. Let me think. I think I do. In Google Sheets. Fruit Loops. Okay. So in the last class that I had where we met, um, I gave them uh, Fruit Loops and a giant bag of multi meal uh, fruit rings, I guess. And we were comparing it to Fruit Loops to see are the distributions the same? Now, So what we did was we counted 3,500 Fruit Loops and got them in these colors. You guys can see this, right? I'm sharing it. And uh, let me just make sure yeah, it's recording. There's a little red button there. OK. So there were 3,532 Fruit Loops in this bag. It was like a five pound, a three pound bag or something like that. It was huge. I'll put some in my pocket, catnip toys. This will make them crazy. And um, we counted them. <laughs> well, when I say we counted them, the students in my class counted them. And they gave, these were the totals that they came up with. So these are the observed values. And what we want to do with chapter 11 is we're looking to see is the distribution that they have told us does the observed information fit the expected distribution that we have? So we're going to say, oh, these are, and you know, either um, we did it twice. We looked online and found a distribution based upon um, what somebody had come across. And these were the percentages that. Um, of course, I don't have them in the order here. This is a picture, so um, it it's not even text. I can't like do it, and I don't have them in the right order because I, I guess I could. Um, wait, this should be twenty. Oh, because I had broken ones. So there were five percent that were expected to be broken. I just took those and just added one to each thing. And said, all right, well, because there's six pieces, so I just, you know, added one to each value. And that's how I got these numbers here. So let me make these a little bigger. Um, yeah. So that's where these things numbers came from. Let me center them. Is it, all right. Oh, anyway. Um, so these were the expected value. These were the percentages that we were supposed to get. So based on those percentages, we then looked and said, okay, well, if I have 3,500 uh, uh, Fruit Loops, okay, this is, let me put these, make these 14 as well. These are the counts I should have received based upon these percentages. So, um, and if I add these up, notice it comes out a little bit bigger because this was 101%. So 
So the numbers are going to be just a little bit higher than what we're supposed to have um, because of rounding. So there was rounding error in this stuff. So, um, but that's what we should have gotten. These were the expected counts that we should have found based upon the percentages that uh, the company says they make. Then what we have to do to do this, what we, it's called the chi-squared goodness of fit test, is we're looking to see does the uh, distribution that we're told exists actually fit what we've discovered. And basically we count stuff and see is it right. And so we take the difference. We subtract the expected value from our observed count. Right? And we find the differences here. And if we add these up, notice it comes, it, it's not quite zero because this number is not 100%. Um, these things should really be 16, you know, 18.6666 and 20.666 and, and so forth. Um, Cause we have five divided by six colors. So it's a little off, but this should be zero because these two answers should be the same. And so what we then do, because these, you know, zero out is we have to square them. That's why it's called chi square. We're squaring the values. And then, so that's this number squared. And then once we do that, we then have to normalize it. So we divide it by the expected value. So we get a value, you know, we're gonna total this up and this number is made up of these pieces. So this chi-square value that we're interested in is made up of these parts. Okay, and so we then get this value that we then compare, we put it on a, a chi-square um, distribution, and we look to see what the p-value is from that, what the probability of getting that value based upon the, um, um, brain stopped working, for, based on the uh, degrees of freedom, and the degrees of freedom, there's a bunch of degrees of freedom to this, um, but based upon those things, we then look to see the probability of getting that value. That's a p-value. And then we can compare it to see, is this distribution accurate? Which is really what we're trying to do. We're trying to see, is the, di I guess not. Is the distribution accurate based upon the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is that this is the correct probabilities. And so this is if we went with these values, this is how we would get a number. We could also say, well, they're evenly distributed. And so each one of these is one sixth. And of course it looks thinks it's a date. Because that's how computers, that's how, Excel works. And weirdly that if I add up one sixth, <laughs> I get two thirteenths, um, which is not correct because these are not fractions. These are dates. So I have to format it to be a number. And it is a fraction. Custom number format. I'm just going to format them as numbers. Yeah. 
equals one divided by six. There. And I'm going to format them as percents. There. Okay. So if they're evenly distributed, then we have these percentages. And then from there, let me make these size 14 as well. And then, so these would be the numbers that we expect to see. And we get, you know, the differences that they exist. We square them. This is the chi squared of that group. And again, we would then use a um, uh, chi square formula to actually find this. Now, this seems like a lot of work, and you only have to do it if you don't have the goodness of fit test on your calculators. If you have the TI 84 plus or newer, you have that in there. So stat tests. the chi-square goodness of fit test. So we have to look at the lists and then we put our expected values in and our observed values in and we actually ask and it gives that information. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put these numbers in. And so I have eight, 10. 1052, 8, 8, 1, and then this one I had 671.08, 741.72, 635.76, 529.8, 600.44, 388.52. All right, so you can have decimal values for our expected counts. Um, that's okay. Um, and then if I go to stat, goodness of fit test. So letter D, list one and list two. And, uh, and then degrees of freedom. Are how many groups I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I take the number of groups and subtract one. And I get my values. And so here's my calculation. Here's my p-value. Now notice this number is bigger than one, it's 1 1.08, but over here it says e to the negative 91. So that means I moved this decimal point 91 places that way. So there are a zero, 90 zeros, and then a one. <laughs> That's really, really, really close to zero. I mean, you, you can't get much closer than that. Remember this can only go up to 99, so it's pretty close. Um, and then these are the values here. So notice if I move across, I get 28.5777314. And then I get the 129 point blah, blah, blah. It shows up all the contributing pieces. So it finds how close everything was to um, how much of it contributed to the chi-square value that we had. So each one of those is in there, that contribution part. So that's how you do it by hand. Um, on the, this is how you would do it by hand, which we'll never do. Uh, this is how you do it in real life. You just plug in the things. Remember, um, the degrees of freedom is one less than the number of things. So that's nice. So here, uh, and I'm not going to do the other one, but I mean, it's the same 
it would be the same thing. I'd put the same numbers in, put these numbers in, put these numbers in, and then have it calculate. And the degrees of freedom is always just one less than the number of groups. So not one less than the number of um, uh, items, but one less than the number of groups that we have. So here we look at this one. Um, they're giving us percentages, OK? We take these percentages and multiply it by how many things there were. There were 400. So never married. This is people ages 15 and up. So 31% of those people ages 15 and up have never been married, males. So that means 400, 400 times this 31.3%. So I can do that in the math. Let me clear these out. So here I have 140, 237, 3, and 20. And here I have 400 times 31.3 divided by 100, because remember it's per cent. And so it'll do that math for me. It'll figure out the numbers based upon the information I have. Um, and so I'm going to do all of these 400 times 56.1 divided by 100. 400 times 2.5 divided by 100. And then 10.1 times 400 divided by 100. And so I get all my values. That's what's going to go in here. You know, the null and alternatives are always going to be the same. The null is that the data does fit the distribution. And the alternative is that the data does not fit the distribution. And then they just change it based whatever the distribution might be. So that's those are always going to be the, the answers for A and B and for the null and alternative hypothesis. The degrees of freedom, remember I said, is one less than the number of groups. So I have one, two, three, four groups. So my degrees of freedom are going to be three. And then what is it? Well, it's chi squared with three degrees of freedom. So, um, and then for some weird reason, they have t's. I don't, I don't know. Um, so they have the, but this is a chi squared distribution. So that's why it's this one. And again, they do weird things, like they could make these harder, but um, they don't. I mean, they ask you to type in the T one. I don't know why they don't ask you to type in the chi-square one. Um, what is the test statistic? Well, stat tests chi-square goodness of fit, list one, list two, Degrees of freedom was three. Calculate. It gives me my chi-square number. It gives me my p-value. Here's my p-value. Now remember, this is 5.17 something uh, times 10 to the negative 4. Which means I have to move those four places. One, two, three, four. That's zero, zero, zero. And there's going to be a fourth zero right here in the front. So there's my four zeros. That's where that comes from. So those number of zeros equals this. We're going to have a zero, a decimal point, and then count one less than you know whatever that count is. So this is a four, there's four zeros, okay? So then it asks me, what is the p-value to four decimal places? I'm rounding down because of the one, so that's where that comes from. And then what does it mean? Well, if the null hypothesis is true, 
this is the probability of getting this distribution. That's it. What does the graph look like? Well, the p-value is always going to be on the right side. So the rest of them are completely useless. This is the only one that has the p-value on the right side. So because we're always looking for greater than, it's going to be over here somewhere. So this is always going to, wherever you have your p-value on the right side, that's going to be the graph that they're asking you for. And then what is alpha? What are we going to do? Oh, look, this looks very familiar to chapters 9 and 10. Uh, where we had no, where we had hypothesis testing, because that's what we're doing. We're doing a hypothesis test. So we're again going to either reject or not reject, because of the alpha is greater than p. We reject if the alpha is smaller than p. We don't reject. And then there either is sufficient evidence to um, uh, conclude, or there is not. So that it doesn't notice there's sufficient evidence to conclude it does not fit. There is there is not sufficient evidence. So if we reject if we reject the null hypothesis, it's this one. If we do not reject the null hypothesis, it's this one. And that's the same problem for each one of for this one, for the next two. The other type of um, chi-square distribution, this one here. The big thing that you have to remember is that they tell you that they're evenly distributed. Um, right here. Evenly distributed means that these numbers are going to be the exact same. Just like here, where we said that these were evenly distributed. We take how many things there are. One, two, three, four, five, six. Divide one by that number. In this case, you got seven. So each one of these will be one seventh times this number. So 14, 19 times 1 seventh. We get that. And that number, and every one of these is going to be the same. So because this number is the same, even though it says it's in red, I think they're all the 14, 19. Um, but if not, obviously, you just take whatever the number is here. Multiply by one, divide by seven. I've been doing this for 15 years. I've never seen a different number. So I'm guessing they're all, say, 1419. These numbers may be different, but this number, this total is the same. Um, and so you multiply. And you're going to take this number, and that's what's going in each and every one of these boxes. And then it's going to go in your list two, each and every one of those squares is going to be the same number. So that's the, the only thing you have to look at when you're doing evenly distributed. They should all have the same value. That's what it means. They've been distributed equal. They're all equal. So it's a weird English thing. I don't know why. It should say, I mean, it says evenly, and we think even and odd in math. But evenly, in this case, means that everything has been, you know, divided evenly. Everybody gets the same amount. Nobody leaves with something different. And if there's something left over, it gets chopped up and everybody gets a little part. Everything else is the same. So the other type of um, hypothesis test is um, in the chi-square is when we have a table. And we're looking to see are these things independent? And I'm going to do number four just because I always do number three and I want to do something different. So we have two things. We have to make a matrix, which you've probably never, ever done before. And to get to the matrix, it's right here above the x negative one. So second matrix. And I'm going to clear these. Um, I'm trying to think, how do I clear them? Mm. Oh, I can do reset, I guess. I don't know. All right. 
So uh, I really want to have these cleared though. Reset. There isn't a reset. Um, I don't think that's it. Matrix. I don't know. Don't know where the reset button is. I guess I'm not going about it. Okay. So I have things in my matrix already. Um, you don't. We're only going to put in A. So I'm going to come here and hit edit, and I'm going to go to A. And this changes the number of rows. This one changes the number of columns. So I have one, two, three, four, five columns i have one two three four rows so i have a four by five matrix and then i just type in the numbers Yeah. When every time you hit enter, I was hitting the decimal point, it just goes to the next uh, next uh, cell. And then when you get to the end of the row, it just, it, it, the last column in the row, it just goes down to the next row. And I can use the right and left arrows to move back and forth or up and down. But I missed a number here. So this one is 15. Zero thirty-five, zero thirty, forty-five, thirty, fifteen, ten, and five. Now, the one thing that we care about is the expected uh, matrix. All the numbers have to be bigger than five. Now, it will go through and do all the calculations for you. Um, to get those numbers, what it does is it goes like this. Okay, so to find each cell in its expected value, 
we take the row total multiply it by the column total and then divide by the grand total so this would take you know column a and then row one multiply those totals together and then divide by the grand total and then column b and row one and multiply and divide by the grand total and then column c and row one and divide by the grand total and column d and row one and divide by the grand total and then column a and row two and then column a and row three and so on it would do every one of those calculations and find those values as long as these numbers here are not less than five your uh chi square your, your chi square distribution is acceptable um it's going to do all that work for us so we don't have to do anything once we put in all our data we go we just quit out of this we go to stat and tests and then we go to the other chi square test so the first two problems are going to use the goodness of fit test which is d the other two are going to use chi square test which is c and then it asks where's our observed where's our expected well the observed are in a that's why we chose a b it's going to take care of all on its own so even though i had some stuff in b already doesn't matter it's going to overwrite it i hit calculate and it's done did all the work if i go to my matrix notice they're both four by fives now i can come down to b and i can look and it's filled in every single cell and none of them are less than five so yay me And then we go in and we actually do the work. So the null hypothesis is that they are independent of each other, that uh, in this case, the age of adult male, the age of the males, and how much life insurance, I think. Yep, how much life insurance they have. Um, those are, we're saying they're independent of each other. The alternative is that they are dependent upon each other. And it will always be those two things that we're because that's what we're testing for is we're testing for independence. So the degrees of freedom in this case are the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So in this case, I would have, I have three rows. Let me fix that because that's ugly. Times the number of columns, four minus one. And I just multiply them together. So I get two, times three, which is, so in my case, in this example here, the degrees of freedom are six. In this example here, it's five minus one, which is four, times four minus one, which is three, four times three is 12. So you have to tell, count up all the columns, all the rows, subtract one from each, and then multiply. And that's going to give you your degrees of freedom. And then it's, again, chi-squared with whatever the degrees of freedom that you found. And to make life easy, well, it's going to be one of these two numbers. Because we have it's either going to be 4 or 12, in my case. So it's going to be, if I don't know how to find this, it's going to be one of these two numbers because I know this is a chi square. And so 
it's got to, these are my only answers that have chi square. So it's going to be one of those two values. You really don't know how to do it. The test statistic. I quit out of it, so I got to do it again. Was 166.73 right there, my chi square. My p value this has 20, this is a two with 29 zeros in front of it, so it's 0 0.28 zeros and a two. So they only want four decimal places, so the first four numbers are all zero. So that's where that comes from. And again, what does it mean? Well, if the null hypothesis is true, if they are independent then this is the probability of getting this distribution. And then put whatever picture you'd like, make yourself happy. And then what is alpha? They told us it was 0.05, it's 5% level. Zero is less than 0.05. So I reject the null hypothesis. And there is evidence to conclude that these two things are dependent upon each other. Because remember, the alternative is what, that they were dependent. The null is that they were independent of each other. So you're going to have one of those two answers. And that's the entire chapter in a nutshell, in you know less than an hour. So that's how you do them. Um, like I said, the, the thing that always trips people up is this evenly distributed. It just means that they're equal. Evenly distributed means equal. I don't know how to make it bigger. There should be a thing, but I don't. I can just zoom in, I guess. Yeah. Be nice if there was a way to make the text bigger, but I don't seem to have that capability. Oh, that's. That's what that one, that's, that's the biggest thing that people seem to get wrong when they're doing this is that evenly distributed means that each of the values in the group is equal. And that'll be, you know, n times one, oops, one divided by uh, the number of groups. So that's how you find it. You just take the number of groups, one divided by the number of groups times the number of people or things that are being looked at. Those are how you find those two things. All right, that's how you find the numbers that are going to go in to the uh, thing. Um, somebody must have a question because I have a little, a little ding. Oh, oh, nope. uh, yes, uh, yes, Sally, you have a question. I want, after the class, I want you to help me with the final project. Give me oh, some sure. clue. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I mean, I don't know who's doing stuff. I know that um, uh, Taria, I think, uh, is there an I in that? Or is this Tara? T-H-A-R-R-A. -R -R -A. I can't tell. I can't tell if there's an I or not. Two R's, Tara, um, or Thara. I'm not sure if it's a hard R or hard TH or not. Uh, he's looking for somebody to uh, work with. Um, remember, I, you only need to do certain parts. So on the 21st, I'm going to tell you what pieces you, how much you need to do. Um, what I would do is 
assume that you know, like if you have to do what, the first part, then that's it. I would just get that stuff out of the way where it's just really just taking a sample from those the list of data and find two sixty from two you need two columns of numbers and choose sixty countries. I don't care how you do it, but that's what you, one of the things you would say. This is how I chose them. I took the first sixty. All right, that had I took the first sixty that had you know uh, uh, precipitation and um, temperature. Okay, done. You know, that that that's an, that's it, it's not the best one. It's not a simple random sample, but it's a sample. It's one of the methods. I you know I this is what I did. This is how I chose it. It, it would be easy. I thought it would be the easiest way. So that's what I did. Okay. There probably will be some bias in it. But that's fine. That's all you have to explain. Then you have to find the means, the standard deviations, um, make histograms, uh, box plots of that data. So if you're like, oh, gee, I think I'm getting a C. This is what I need to do to get done. Get that done and out of the way. OK. All right. And then you have two weeks to work on the rest of it if I say, oh, uh, so you need to do parts one and two or parts one and three, whichever you have to do two of them. I don't care which two, you know, you have to do part one because you can't do it, the other stuff without that. So you have to turn in two parts, either part one and two or part one and three. Well, you've got part one done, <laughs> you know, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to do the regression. So you do the regression on the two things and you turn in the thing and, and I'm happy. If you only have to do the one part, you're done. I'm like, oh, you have a, a B, you want to move up to an A, you only have to do one part. You've already finished part one. All right. Um, if you have an A, so when are you gonna tell, tell, what was that? So when are you going to tell? Um, I will tell you guys tell on the 21st. Um, I'm going to send you, I'll send you an email okay. that says, uh, Sal, okay. you, you have to do part one. Um, will, you have to do, sorry, you have to do parts one, two, and three. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm just pulling and like, but I will send you that on like here. So Thursday and uh, next Tuesday we'll meet. I'll probably look at stuff on the like the twentieth and and make sure that it's sent out to you by the twenty first. I'll send it in an email to your school email because that's the only email I have. Um, although I might hold on. Let me see. Do I have an other email. I, do I have emails here? I don't even know. Let me look. Um, oh, there you are. Uh, so I do have an email. So I, I might be able to, can I send it through here? Can I send? I mean, I guess I can copy this and send. I'll, I'll use these emails here that are in um, uh, uh, what web assign that way I know you get it. Um, almost everybody has their school email, but a few of people have their personal email, so I'll just use these and I will send you that information and say you need to do this chapter. If you don't get an email, I mean, I guess I'll send you an email saying you don't have to do anything. If you have an A, you don't have to do anything. So if you have an A minus or if you have a 90 better than 90 or better, um, as of you know next Wednesday, you don't have to do anything. So I get, um, so if you uh, have like 90, 90 or better as of next Wednesday, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do with the final, right? There's, there's no final exam necessary. Oh, okay. So like, if it's someone like um have 90 or more, like. So the next Wednesday, it doesn't matter if you did that or not. Right. There's one That's more test it. and one more homework. So, I mean, it's not going to like, if you're like, if if you have an 89 and I think you can get a 90, if I think you can get an A by taking this test. Like if you're like right on the cusp, you know, I usually round up anyway. So if you have an 89 point something, that's an A. You know, I'm not going to like bust your hump for like a tenth of a, you know, a couple tenths of a point. Like. If oh you God. have a, an 84, then I'm going to be like, okay, just do part one and we'll, you know, then I'll count that. As, that's, that's what you have to do for your final. So, so 90 like, is the A, right? A 90 is an A, yes. 
Yeah. Uh, what about 80? 80. So if you have an 80, you'll have to do part one. If, you have, if you're in the 80s, you'll have to do the first part. If you're in the 70s, you have to do two parts. If you're below okay. 70, you have to do all of it. Okay. So, so like next I'm Wednesday, gonna, we'll determine everything. Yes. I will probably after class today go in because the, the test second test is due. I'm probably I'm gonna go in and put all the grades in so that way you have an idea. So if you look now and you're like, oh gee, I have a uh, an 88, you know, just you know, I, I'll do the first part. Just to, I'll make sure I get the first part done. If you have a 92, then you're like, oh, I guess I'm good. You know, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, I don't know what your grades are, and I don't want to bring them up on on screen. So, so yeah. I mean, I can yeah. stop sharing and go in and do it and go. Oh, yeah, this is where you are. Um, but so, like, like, I'm looking up, right like, I, I, I'm waiting, like, let, so you can update the grades. So by that, yeah. Kind of so I mean, I, we're here. Like, I'll probably after class right now go in and do put in the test grades, put in the people's homework grades. Um, there's a test due next, uh, this coming Sunday, the 17th. Yes. Yes. So, and, um, that, the, chat, the, the, the homework. It's on chapters nine. eight, nine, and 10. No, no, sorry. Uh, nine, 10 and 12. Okay. Okay. The test. Okay. But like, um, I have some questions that I want you to revise for me, like homework 10. Yeah. And um, the eleventh yesterday, you want to do yesterday? I have some questions also. Oh, so yesterday we like... did chapter twelve, actually. <laughs> yeah, chapter twelve. Yeah, yes. I and I, I, I and... sadly didn't review. I didn't record it. So, um, or I recorded it and messed it up. I have no idea what happened. Um, this is the YouTube video of um, me doing a problem from chapter twelve from. A couple of years ago, um, I saved it uh, because I tend to mess things up somewhere along the line. And I don't know, like I said, I don't know if I uh, stopped recording, didn't hit record, didn't hit stop recording. I don't know, but it didn't save into Classroom. So um, we'll need to just go back and, and fix that one. Um, but I will uh, go in and do people's grades like after like we finish here. Um, just so I can uh, make give you that way I'm at least kind of up to date and you'll have an idea of where you are where you stand um, okay. and then next Wednesday I'll have like I'll do it after chapter 10 I mean after the third test so then I'll go and say you know I mean even in class next Thursday uh, actually we won't have to meet next Thursday um, so I might even do it before next uh, before Wednesday I might even have it for Tuesday so I can say well you're you're doing fine. You you don't have to do the final. Sal, you you have to do part one. Uh, Michelle, you have to do all of it, and you know that that's the three of you. So you'll know Tuesday, you know where you stand. You know. Um, okay. So I'll probably like the the people who are here. I'll probably just tell you like right right straight up. Here's where you are, um, and um, everybody else. I'll send an I'll send an email anyway. But you know. You three usually are the three that are always here, so I'll make sure that you know <laughs> ahead of time where you stand. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, because I'd rather you know make sure you know because I like I want to make sure the three of you get A's because you know you're the three who are always here. So I you know I have more of a bond with you guys than I do with any of the other students because I don't know who any of them are because I don't see them. Like I was telling Will, I got two emails from people who just bought the book over the 4th of July, which meant they were missing what? eight chapters and two tests. And they're like, can we make this stuff up? And I went, no, actually, you can't. Because <laughs> they didn't even then bother to do the stuff that was due, up, that was open, that was, you know, not past due. So, like, you know, if they'd said, if they'd sat down and said, well, I did, I realized I've, you know, missed all this stuff but i see that you know chapters 9 through 13 are open and i'm going to work on them and i'll get those done i, I would have been like sure but they haven't even logged in so like they bought the stuff and have never i've done zero work so i'm like well i'm not giving yeah. you extensions you haven't done anything so it's it's really said, really it's really, really weird 
but like you guys, it's like you know, you're like, oh, I, the only thing I can't extend is I cannot extend past this day here. I can like, if you need a few days on um, test four, let me know next Tuesday that you're like, oh, gee, I think I might need some extra time. I'll give it to you. You know, okay. I'm, okay. you know, like I may or I'll, I'll try to check my email, but we're not going to have class, you know, on the 21st, the 28th, or the 26th, the 28th. So, and class ends on the first, like, like it closes, you can't get into any more access to, to a web assign after that day. So I can't give you an extension past the first because there's no class. I then have to get your grades in, in like a week. So like, there's no real time to me for me to give you extensions after the first for anything. Um, like you can't get into WebAssign after this day. So if you're like, gee, I need a day and extra time. No, there's no extra time after that. Um, but like, so if you need me to move this to here, sure, I don't have a problem with that. I don't care. Um, just tell me, send me an email. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you get extensions. Um, okay, but, well, we can send you an email. We can send you an yeah. email. Just send me an email and I'll see it. And um, thanks. Sorry, I couldn't make it. <laughs> okay. So thank you. But like thank you. you're the three that that you know, are always here. I get some emails from uh, from him or her. I don't know. I've never heard the voice, so I don't know, male or female. Um, but you know that's it. Like the rest of you, the rest of the class, I don't know anybody. I I don't like. I know none of these people. <laughs> like, I like they don't show up. I don't have a. I don't really get a conversation. I. I mean, I'm hoping they're doing fine. Um, I can see that they've logged in. You know, like this person only logged in. Hasn't logged in since the class began. This person bought the book on the seventh, on the fifth. Wow. So like they've done no time the rest of you are all in like the 14th was today so i mean most people have come in and done stuff you know since the break you know so i'm willing to help them because you know like they're i'm assuming they're all doing work they just don't ask me for stuff so i don't know um but that's that's everything i got to say Okay. Um, uh, one more try. <laughs> uh, like Michelle always needs extra time for stuff, so that that's fine. Um, I'll give her whatever you know. She gets it. She just puts in the wrong things. So um, I'll fix those. I think. Will you good? Um, I was gonna ask. Um. Is there still time for me to submit the notes? Because I think that that's really bringing my grade. Yeah. Down. I might be wrong. Yeah. On that, but... Let's submit them. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I haven't checked them in a few days. So, like, like they're not, like, I don't care if they're late. I just, because, like, I like I don't cover them. I only show you how to do the work in this. I don't, ex the, the, the notes are kind of explain what is going on. So, like, you know, the, the, so there's, like, two parts to it. So that's why I ask you to do the notes. Um, yeah, just, just submit them. I'll, I'll go in and I give you credit for them. I, I like it. They're either, like I said, they're done or they're not done. <laughs> you know, I might start doing late, you know, but I just like, I might give more, change it to more points, but like I used to do that like zero, one and two and one was late, but it's still a 50 if you turn them in late. So that's kind of a harsh. So like, I think I have to give it more points and then I can like deal with it being late, but Right now, it's either they're either done or they're not done. So. Okay, cool. Because I was gonna say I, I'm like I'm pretty like I feel confident in the in the uh, um, the homeworks that I've been doing and the tests that I've taken and stuff like that. But yeah, I did, like, I submitted like I just, three like, things of notes, and I know that that's like gonna hurt my grade at some point. Right. I mean, because like like I said, those are kind of like the whole like idea, the concepts behind what's we're talking about. So, like seeing how to do the work and understanding what the work means are two completely different parts. Um, and you kind of need both of them. So especially in stuff like this, where you're like learning something completely different and new, uh, that has no real, that has no comparison to anything else that you would be taught in any of your math classes ever. 
So um, that's the only reason I have them is because I want you to understand the whys behind it. And none of the videos are more than 20 minutes. So like, <laughs> like I mean, it's, it's crazy that like it used to take me forever to go through all the parts, but I would always get stopped by people. So I, you know, shiny thing, I get stopped and, and, and have to explain something over and over again or um, go why. So this I found was much quicker. I could give more time to this part, which I think is helpful because you guys need to see how to do the things. So yeah, turn them in. All right. Can do. All right. Excellent. So you, you're, you're good now. You understand what I, like I said, just start working on part one. You two will, I mean, it can't hurt, you know, yeah. explain, just answer the questions and then um, we'll, I'll tell you next week what you need to, what you really need to do for the final. So once I have an idea okay. of what your grades are. All right. All right. Okay. Excellent. So watch, I'm Thank going you. to, I'm going to stop the video.